In this comparative study, I'll be comparing Jean Luc Godard's 1960 French New Wave film Breathless along with Wong Kar Wai's 2000 Hong Kong New Wave film In the Mood for Love. Despite the two films were made at a different time and place, I've chosen to compare them as both of these films occurred at times when society was becoming a different country. Because of this, New Wave films were made to reflect the changes and general social unrest, with the directors rebelling against the traditions of filmmaking to pioneer for the start of a new movement. I will also be focusing specifically on how the influence of film noir impacted the cinematography of New Wave films, thus answering the question, to what extent did film noir influence the making of New Wave films such as Breathless and In the Mood for Love? During the late 1940s to 1960s, the French New Wave was launched as a movement to rebel against the tradition of quality. A group of filmmakers who were receiving wide critical recognition at the time for their successful adaptations of literature pieces. À se rebeller, non, c'est-à-dire, je trouve, c'est embêtant de pas pouvoir faire ce qu'on a exactement ce qu'on a envie de faire. According to the article A Certain Tendency of French Cinema, published in 1954 by French filmmaker François Truffaut, he expresses his anger towards screenwriters held responsible for the adaptations produced, saying, "That is why I will restrict my remarks solely to scriptwriters, those very people who were behind the emergence of poetic realism in the tradition of quality movement." The critics and theorists of Cahiers du Cinema insisted that all directors, even those under a binding contract of studios like Hollywood, are the ones who incorporate their artistic visions into the art of storytelling, not screenwriters. These theorists especially idolized directors such as Alfred Hitchcock, Orson Welles, and John Ford, identifying them as auteurs. Many of these directors were inspired and influenced by the style of American film noir, such as Francois Truffaut and Jean-Luc Godard, where it expresses the interpretations of a modern-day post-war society through the moods of darkness, anxiety, pessimism, and paranoia. According to James Nairmore from A Panorama of American Film Noir, France was also emerging from La Année Noire, and its younger generations were especially attracted to American jazz clubs and the smoky, world-weary ambience of the average Bogart thriller. These critics turned filmmakers took their influences and made films that incorporated each of their own style and charisma respectively, successfully replacing the classic French cinema with a new form of artistic revolution. Similarly, the Hong Kong cinema started to be replaced by young, innovative filmmakers during the late 1970s to mid-1980s, who collectively formed what was to be known as the Hong Kong New Wave. Spawned from the French New Wave, this movement sparked into two waves. The first wave included a group of young directors, such as Trey Hark, Alan Fong, and Patrick Tam, who were educated abroad at film schools and decided to put their Western practices in Hong Kong cinema. Then came the second wave, where the Hong Kong cinema started to gain even more international recognition with directors like Alex Law, Fu Chan, and of course, Wong Kar Wai. I'm very fond of uh, that period uh, in Hong Kong because it is a special period. The films of the Hong Kong New Wave, especially the second New Wave, specifically addresses the post-colonial identity of Hong Kong after the 1997 handover, imitating the feeling of isolation, loneliness, and loss of identity. Wong Kar Wai's films, in particular, show the concern of Hong Kong's identity, often with films that surround the concept of finding one's true self. Being heavily influenced by Western filmmaking cultures such as the French New Wave, Wong, along with a handful of New Wave directors such as John Wu and An Hui, pioneered to redefine Hong Kong cinema with new experimental techniques, personal narratives, and serious artistic visions. According to Homer B. Petty's International Noir, the Hong Kong New Wave simply infuses this mood of cynicism, pessimism, and darkness into the Asian cinema mainstream, which at the time was mostly dominated by Hong Kong martial arts pictures, comedies, and romantic melodramas. Because the Hong Kong New Wave was sprung from the French New Wave, which was influenced by film noir, it wouldn't be much of a surprise to see elements of film noir appearing in the films that belong to the Hong Kong New Wave. The cinematography of the French New Wave doesn't follow a specific set of rules and guidelines, but rather it takes out the majority of cinematography that seems too conventional. The French New Wave was known for its stylistic innovations, such as shooting at the actual location, using natural lighting, mobile cameras, and long takes. Je ne veux pas être amoureuse de toi. One of the key features of the cinematography in Breathless is its use of loose framing. The camera is constantly moving in order to mimic not only the busy life of Michel the criminal, who is constantly on a run from the police, but to mirror his playful and likable personality. Additionally, the peculiar choice of extreme close-ups in this sequence of the gunshot scene obscured the action of a shootout, presenting a murder in an unmotivated fashion. 
Godard resorts to these camera movements in order to become different as a new wave director from the mainstream ways of cinematography by breaking all the traditional rules of film, such as steady cameras and conventional sequences of shots. Just like film noir was created during a dark period in America, this film was influenced for the same reasons due to the social unrest in France at the time, as the old, traditional cinema became more and more disconnected from the contemporary world. This film shows influence from film noir most heavily through the use of long tracking shots and a deep focus, which Orson Welles first perfected in the opening scene of Touch of Evil. On the other hand, the camera movement of In the Mood for Love isn't as obvious as Breathless, using common steady cameras and occasional movements. The composition, however, is. The majority of this film is shot by frames within frames in order to emphasize the voyeuristic feeling felt by the audience, almost as if we were prying into the personal affairs of Chow and Chan's lives. By placing objects in the foreground, it enhances the feelings the characters have of being observed, as well as the audience's feelings as observers. The cramped framing of shots reflects the restriction of action due to the constant threat of gossip under the close observation of landlords and the rest of their community in 1960s Hong Kong. Likewise, the technique of frames within frames in film noir is used to create a sense of confinement or entrapment. Another cinematic feature evident in Breathless is the mise-en-scene. The representation of mirrors is used to show a reflection of Michel's imitation of Humphrey Bogart's iconic gestures and Patricia's imitation of Michel's three faces. In both films, the characters are seen to imitate other people, trying to be someone they admire and envy to escape reality. However, some may argue that the mirrors don't fully deliver the traditional representation of split personalities associated with film noir, and rather it is just there to establish Michel and Patricia's characteristics. Godard is trying to contradict the symbolism embedded in traditional films, showing audiences that this is what reality is. Michel is portrayed as a hard-boiled character by his actions, the heavy smoking, and the way he's dressed, which confirms what James Nairmore said about younger generations were especially attracted to the smoky, world-weary ambience of the average Bogart thriller. In the same way, In the Mood for Love uses the mise-en-scene of bars, mirrors, and reflection to exhibit the feeling of entrapment and portrayal of duplicate identities. This is shown to emphasize how they are confined within their own problems and can't be their true selves in the society of 1960s Hong Kong. This is opposed by the choice of costume, which seems to be inspired by the 60s era, where people were expected to be abstinent and have proper decorum, especially women. The smoke, rain, and darkness in this film show similarities to the characteristics of film noir, where it often uses scenes that are obscured by smoke, fog, or just darkness to highlight the confused emotion of the characters. On a different note, the lighting of Breathless seems to be less influenced by film noir and more by possibly Italian neorealism. The whole film is naturalistic, using real locations and natural lighting, which shows nothing is artificial and everything is genuine and real. The interior daytime scenes are all set in rooms with large windows to let in natural light, while the night scenes are dimly lit so it relies solely on street lamps and neon signs as if the audience was there in the present as well. Breathless doesn't really have a lot of lighting associated with film noir, such as chiaroscuro lighting, which suggests film noir does not influence the certain aspect of cinematography within Godard's films, especially this one. However, In the Mood for Love exhibits a stronger influence of film noir through its choice of lighting. The dramatic play of light has a huge role in setting the emotion that Wong Kar Wai intends the film to have. In the scene where they are about to depart ways, the backlighting is positioned to create silhouettes that express the character's inner torment. Unlike Breathless, the lighting throughout In the Mood for Love is sharp and artificial, as the majority of the scenes take place at night. This type of lighting is fundamental in setting the mood of the film, which therefore highlights the subtle expression of emotion and the tension between the characters. The film is full of heated colors like red, which signifies passion, love, and seduction, and is accompanied by traits of film noir such as deep shadows, smoke, and silhouettes. Setting the film at night links In the Mood for Love with film noir, as most film noirs are set at night in big cities with a heavily industrialized environment. This setting enhances the feeling of entrapment, along with certain angles borrowed from the style of German Expressionism. In conclusion, the influence of film noir has impacted many films over decades, bringing inspiration to many new wave directors such as Godard and Wong Kar Wai that aim to break free from the rules and conventions of mainstream films, creating some of the most iconic and revolutionizing films in film history. 
To a certain extent, the cinematography of these films are influenced by film noir, and despite some aspects of being non-compliant to noir characteristics, these new films exhibit a distinct style that makes them individual and unconventional.